Going through a website redesign or migrating to another CMS can be a pretty stressful time for a lot of SaaS and marketing teams. Rightfully so, because if you end up botching that process, well, you can drastically decrease the number of conversions, the number of demos and trial signups that you're seeing simply by making the wrong step. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the few things you should consider when planning for the migration process, whether again, that's a website redesign or perhaps you're moving to another CMS. What specifically should you be looking for in order to mitigate the chances of losing rankings, losing quality traffic, and worst case, losing demo and trial signups? Let's dive in. So if you're planning to migrate to another CMS, or maybe this is the first build of the website, one of the core questions you need to be asking is, are we planning to build on the best CMS for us? If you're not familiar already what a CMS is, CMS stands for Content Management System. And a content management system is essentially a pre-built backend for the website that houses all of the actual content, the pages of the website, the posts of the website, and essentially all of the website's content. There are many popular CMS systems out there, but the two most popular and the two most that probably make the most sense for your business being again in the SaaS space would be either WordPress or Webflow. The reason why I recommend building on WordPress or Webflow for the vast majority of B2B SaaS businesses that I work with is because they already come essentially ready out of the box. You already have the features inside to define page titles, to define meta descriptions, right? You can easily optimize pages. You also have built-in plugins and tools that allow you to do other optimizations such as speed. These are crucial components to allowing for a great user experience. And one of the downfalls that I see a lot of businesses make is that they think they need a custom built CMS for the marketing website. And in many cases, unless you have a complex solution, Webflow or WordPress or even another CMS potentially can provide everything that you need at a much lower cost and much lower complexity instead of having to constantly involve a development team to make changes or to constantly have to delegate tasks and changes internally. These tools are already pre-built out of the box and allow you to easily adapt and make changes on the fly. The second thing to consider when going through a migration is ask yourself if you have clear direction that you can provide to the agency or to the freelancer that is actually going to be building the new website, that is going to be building the new design. And I think a great way for going in and starting to structure this and build that right direction is by essentially tearing down the existing website and looking at where all of the problem areas and what specifically are you trying to solve for with the new design. So some examples of that could be you're overly focused on a broad market and you wanna bring that in and, and be more specialized, for example, on the homepage and the layout of the homepage, or maybe on your landing pages, you have multiple call to actions for different actions and you should be consolidating in that into a singular call to action. These are some of the weaknesses that you can find on the existing website to start to give some clear direction in terms of what you actually want to improve in terms of the new design. Now, the reason why I think this is super important is because you need to give some direction and have some idea of where you want the design to go. If you don't give any type of structure or details or somewhat of a plan to discuss with the agency that's actually doing the migration, you might be a bit surprised at what the actual output looks like once it's live and ready. And by giving that clear defined structure and strategy for what you're trying to improve, you're gonna have a much better confined output and have a better understanding of what you're actually going to get once it's done. The third thing I would take a look at in terms of a redesign is understanding the page types that you need for the new website. So for SaaS businesses, typically you're gonna to wanna to have templates for your use case pages, solution and features and benefits pages, competitor comparison pages, as well as the actual structure of how you want to display your blog content. Again, this overlaps a bit with point number two, but you need to have an idea of what you're planning to build out so you can clearly build structured templates for those different page types, but also follow best practice when it comes to landing page design for for SaaS businesses. And the fourth item on the list in getting a bit more granular on the last point is providing some direction as well in terms of the actual layout for those pages. So thinking about your homepage as an example, knowing that you want to clearly have the headline at the top, the value proposition underneath in a particular font size, a call to action, right? Getting that granular with what you need on the homepage as well as 
We will have a lead magnet section. We will display statically three hyper relevant blog posts that support the problem that we're solving on the homepage or going through and building in social proof in the form of video. These are all things that you should plan and structure for and you can follow really best practice and already know that these pages will convert really well if you give guidance on the best way to structure these pages. And the fifth thing is when you're choosing a partner, when you're choosing an agency to complete and go through the redesign or migration process with you is to choose a partner that has deep experience and expertise in your particular industry. If you focus on finding a hyper-specialized web design agency that only does B2B SaaS website redesigns and migrations or only for B2B tech, they're already gonna know a lot of these things. You should still give them input and structure and have that discussion, but they should already know how to best optimize for conversions. So if you're planning to go through the migration process or if you're planning to redesign your website, think about those five core items that I mentioned and I promise you that the process will go much smoother and you can mitigate the chances that you'll actually see a negative impact when you get on the other side of actually the launch and having everything live.